Dr. Ghosh, if this was a race, and I know as a scientist you will say it's not, but there is ego, there is vanity, there is pride and all of that, when it comes to any such scientific achievement, where does the global space order stand at this moment, given that it's not just countries that are in this race, but now powerful tech billionaires who are also trying to uh, be a part of this competition? I still think there's a spirit of um, uh, not competition, but cooperation. I think in the, so you know, we have societies where Indians, Japanese, everybody is a member, the Meteorological Society, for example, which Dr. Sri Kumar would be aware of. Um, so so I, I think still it's overwhelmingly uh, cooperation. And just to quickly uh, answer your last question, how's the, the rover? You have to make the decision to drive and it can still get into trouble. It can get stuck. And I have faced this. And if you are the mission panel and I've been in that position, you have to make the judgment call and you are responsible. No, so what happens? You because you're sitting all this distance away. You have, yes. you know, what I appear is some, you know, it, it feels like some kind of a video game type console. And you're trying yes. to control something on the moon without really knowing what the surface looks like. How did you get yeah. stuck? What happened? What do you do? Well, our rover got stuck. The Mars rover spirit got stuck. And we couldn't get out. We couldn't get out in time. And it, it was a disaster. So, um, well, if it gets overturned, there is no way to turn it back. Um, so every time you make a move with the rover, and I have been in this position where you have to make this judgment and you have to sign off on a particular route, you are you have to make that best judgment. And then ultimately, there's a little so bit of So what happened in your case? How did it get stuck? Well, it was, uh, you know, we, we mis miscalculated how much sand there is. And so the, the, so the wheels kept turning and it didn't go forward. And so... Uh, then the winter came, and then of course it was not parked for the winter, so it had to, it died. What so, could you have so done you know, differently in that situation, like in hindsight? See, uh, hindsight, you know, there is no way. At some point, you have to take a little bit of risk; otherwise, you are not going to move. So we had a, a high-rise camera on above, and we would do route planning through that. Right now, Perseverance has a helicopter or drone which helps in route planning. But ultimately, you know, there is no roads on the moon or on Mars, right? You have to choose a route and you don't know. What, what, then so is the surface a... of the moon also sandy? Like, is it easy to navigate or is it like a hard surface? See, if you talk to um, Neil Armstrong, he would tell you the dust is very stubborn. It's electrostatic and it st sticks to the boots. Uh, what it does to the rover electronics, the wheels, would it get into... For example, the gearbox, well, I don't know. That's all very interesting. It's a, see, that is why it is so difficult, because you're into the unknown. So that is what I think, you know, it's not a humdrum thing. You know, it is, there are unknowns and there will be, for example, you know, if, if you are... No, but that's really solar, complex because, you know, I, I'm a student of commerce and economics, not really science. But if you make all the effort of getting to the surface of the moon, and then for some reason, your rover just gets stuck as you come out, that's a lot of effort, then that just got stuck in a bunch of, in, in, in some sand. Right. I mean, this is reality. I mean, imagine people who used to go to America maybe 200, 300 years back. You go by ship and then you um, take the horse, horse to California and it takes many, many months. It might die, it might crash, you might die. So, I mean, this is just how things are. You're going into a new frontier. It is not defined. So, at some point, you have to face that. Dr. Srikumar, what would you be most concerned about as we count down to the 23rd of August? What would be your worry number one? Well, uh, not too many worries except for uh, uh, completely unanticipated thing. You know, the space always has challenges. Uh, I think this time the ISRO team is uh, fairly well prepared with various contingencies of the landing part of it. Uh, so, barring any completely unforeseen situation in which, you know, if certain systems malfunction uh, way beyond uh, the results that you've seen from tests that have been conducted, I do not see anything that actually stops uh, ISRO from successfully landing this time. Uh, Ramesh Chandra Kapoor, what would you be most concerned about? If you were at ISRO right now, you know, what would be your biggest concern? Most important thing is obviously uh, the landing, which will be perfect as uh, we have been uh, sort of uh, visualizing. 
Next is the uh, functioning of the various instruments because lender has got a few instruments, so has the rover got. The rover can do some in situ experiments, and this is a wonderful thing because it has got uh, spectroscopes, uh, and then laser induced ablation is possible, and then you can uh, try to find out the composition of the material there. So, mineralogy is one of the major things, and lender also has some equipments to know about the. Uh, uh, the very thin, extremely thin atmosphere of the moon, and and of course the interiors in terms of the seismic activity that also is to be measured. That apart, see uh, there are a lot of ambitions with uh, as these instruments are supposed to work, and communication also must work because uh, it's a very uh, it's a foreign land, and space is very hostile. It's, it, it it doesn't uh, spare anyone, anybody, anything. So uh, everything must work. And as it was being said, uh, the rover uh, has six wheels and it has a ground clearance of about six inches or so. So one is hoping that uh, it is able to move around. Uh, its speed is supposedly one centimeter per second and it should do in next uh, 12 days or so, uh, about 300 to 500 meters of exploration and then whatever. But main thing is that there is proper landing and the functioning of the various instruments. Uh, Arvind Paranjali, are we planning a, a are we planning a man mission to the moon? Is that something that you think we should be investing a lot of time, energy, and money on, or do you think that's not really something India should be pushing at this moment? No, I think we should be uh, worrying, but that 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 will take time, isn't it? But I think what we need to understand in this discussion is that something which point we have been missing, and that is the distance between these two celestial bodies, that is Mars and Moon. So the moon is the closest one and signal, our radio signal itself takes about 1.2 seconds to reach moon and another 1.2 seconds to come back. So if there is something that is happening either on the surface of moon with this um, rover, we will know only after one, I mean, say you, have, you get to know something and then you send back the signal and it takes more than two and a half seconds, which is a very, very long uh, time gap, you see. So, as uh, Shri Kumar has said, like, um, certainly, I mean, they are more worried. I mean, I can't be uh, talking about how much worried I am. But yes, as you said, that the um, human mission ultimately has to be there. But then, as the time progresses, we'll probably have better alternatives than sending uh, human beings to the moon. We also have something Amitabh Ghosh planned as a solar observatory next, the Aditya. Do you want to tell our viewers a bit about that? Uh, the significance of India working on the solar observatory and what it would potentially achieve? Right, so it, there, there is, they're going to probably study the sun and, 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 and you know, we fixate on one thing, but each, so each, each agency does many, many missions and some come in the limelight and some don't. And so there is another NISAR mission which is being um, developed with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So there is a lot of things that ISRO has in the pipeline and they are, I think, um, trying to do a reusable launch vehicle. So there are a lot of things that ISRO is doing. Um, so, uh, and, and same with NASA, there's a lot, but there's some get very highlighted. 